A very good morning to all the participants from India and around the world. A warm welcome to this second session of international webinar series in civil engineering, which has been sponsored and approved by Indian Society for Technical Education (ISTE) and co-sponsored by Bharti Cement, Bangur Cement, and Vicat France. I, Mr. Pradeep Kulkarni, lecturer from Civil Department, KL Sri Vasanthrao Poddar Polytechnic, Belagavi, Karnataka, India, welcome you all. and the today's resource person professor t veena madam kls shri vasanthrao poddar polytechnic belagavi was started in the year 1992 formerly known as polytechnic for women later in the year 2000 it was branded as kls shri vasanthrao poddar polytechnic belagavi with co education currently vasanthrao poddar polytechnic is offering diploma education in five disciplines that is architecture civil engineering computer science engineering electronics and communication engineering and mechanical engineering i thank our management karnataka law society our governing council chairman shri un kalkundrigar sir our principal mrs s h malaj for giving us the opportunity for preparation and conduction of this workshop all about structural analysis and design youtube channel is a new platform for learning civil engineering which has been started in the year 2019 by professor abhijit baikerikar with kls vpp civil department colleagues to begin with our today's session i would like to introduce our resource person professor t veena madam professor t veena madam has completed her b ed and ms in mathematics in karnataka university dharwad madam is passionate about communicating math to school and diploma student she had visited united states during year 2008 2009 and visited community colleges conference held at upstate new york during this period as a part of fulbright foundation program with her husband madam has 28 years of teaching experience in mathematics and applied science she has also worked as head of the departments of applied science and humanities presently she is working as dean administration in kls sri vasanthrao poddar polytechnic belagavi i welcome you ma'am now i hand over the platform to professor t veena madam yeah good morning everybody uh i hope all of you are uh, comfortable and uh, students especially after uh, during this lockdown and the relaxation of lockdown have uh, entered a new era presently um i would like to thank professor uh, abhijit uh, the hod of uh, civil engineering department of uh, kls vpp Uh, for taking up this initiative and uh, which is a very good platform for all of us to do the learning programs uh, while we are at home i thank professor pradeep of civil department uh, who has uh, given an introduction about me i thank all the uh, faculty members and the organizers and the principal of kls vpp in ha- making this webinar happen yeah uh, well this uh, webinars have uh, become an integral part of this lockdown period and it, it has given us a lot of food for thought and of course lots of food for our appetite too but uh, when i say appetite i would be referring to a only a particular section in the society that is for the privileged well many youngsters uh, we uh, all the time we are targeting youngsters now i am of an older generation uh, you are all the students presently are of the generation z and we are, the aim of teachers is to aim at your generation and we saw that most of the times students were they found this lockdown period very amazing they played games on their mobiles not realizing whether they were it was day or a night but somehow these webinar series lot of uh, things happening on uh, virtual platforms digital platforms uh, made us learn quite a few things and with this lockdown period we have also uh, come to know that there is a change in the teaching and the learning styles adapting to the new uh, emerging trends we need to gear up and we need to adapt to them so uh good morning friends and uh, i would like to begin uh, my presentation the first question that i would like to ask is 
what is mathematics see when you ask this question uh, usually what the first answer that comes to your mind if you ask a school going kid or if you ask a college going kid what is there in mathematics it is just arithmetic it is just algebra and it is just geometry well uh, as we go further i think we can put we can throw more light on what mathematics is all about the definition that i would like to use here is it's a science that developed from the investigation of geometric figures and computing numbers see basically numbers were the main basis for all mathematics to develop to add on it is a science that investigates abstract structures using logic for their properties and patterns see when you look at uh, a triangle or you look at a polyhedron or you look at an icosahedron all these the study of the various properties of all these patterns were uh, the prime uh, work of the mathematicians uh, is mathematics stand alone well uh, covid 19 has referred to this word stand alone very frequently uh, uh, the shops and the businesses which were on stand alone were uh, allowed to function so is it stand alone can i give a possible answer for this question well let us not answer the question right away what i, I would like to say is uh, i'll just take a few humorous statements that come up in mathematics see mathematics is the part of physics where the experiments are cheap you no need no, no need to establish a laboratory you don't have to buy expensive equipment so mathematics is all a deep philosophy and abstraction where you can think of this humorous statement where the experiments are cheap moreover mathematics you can compare it with like it's computer science without electricity or vice versa we can say that science is mathematics without electricity well uh, if you on a serious note if you just look at uh, the statements that i have made uh, we can just ponder upon these statements and this gives us slightly how what the characteristics is about mathematics okay it also brings uh, us to the some important questions like when did mathematics start uh, did it start with euclid or what are the key concepts in mathematics whether it's numbers shapes dimensions infinity change or abstraction or where do we see mathematics in everyday life i feel that maths is more in smartphone than in the school well the uh, if you look at a brief history of mathematics well history if you go it is even before uh, uh, bc so just looking at some of the revolutions that happened in mathematics and science it began in the uh, 17th century with the introduction of analytic geometry differential and integral calculus and we owe a lot to sir isaac newton who was the uh, propounder of differential and integral calculus later what happened is when 17th century maths came into four people started exploring this and in the 19th century the desire for more security in extension of higher learning prompted by the french revolution led to the revision or and the revision of the foundations of new mathematics well uh, this century i mean up till the 20th and of course in the 21st century it became a period of new advances and mathematics was characterized by precision and rigorous proof so a lot of proof and lot of accuracy was involved in this century and new advances were also made well um, i would like to make a point here that uh, in, when we study mathematics in schools most of the times the history of mathematics goes be is, is left off see if you just look at the ancient civilization in particular the egyptians the babylonians the hindu the chinese they possessed a lot of amount of uh, practical geometry 
well there are 84 problems in a collection of the in, in an egyptian collection which is called as the rind papyrus which gives you some 84 problems to solve and this was dating about 1800 bc it was dated about 1800 bc so the earliest uh, uh, evidence of written mathematics was found on clay also and it dates to the sumerians who built the earliest civilization in Mesopotamia. So clearer comprehension of the subject today makes it uh, possible to master mathematical theory without losing sight of its applications. So I'm talking on uh, the mathematical applications in civil engineering. So if there is a blend of what mathematics we do and how we relate it to real time or real life situations, that would give us more understanding of the subject. Well, uh, when we speak of uh, trigonometry, I would like to start with trigonometry. Uh, teaching trigonometry to SSLC students or to 11th grade or to the uh, PUC students, it's a Herculean task because they have to just remember all the six functions, six trigonometric functions, uh, which makes it which is what, what is why, and then they tend to get confused and then we give them an abbreviation to remember all the six ratios. But if you study it from a different point of view with a practical application in mind, I think uh, uh, students told with by making small examples, that would make the foundation much better. Yeah, whenever we are going up a staircase, oh, it is a little difficult to go up a staircase uh, because there is a slope. And uh, we, here I've taken an example of what, how to find the slope of a staircase. And let's consider that activity of finding the slope of a staircase. So I've just drawn this figure. Well, uh, when... Sorry for the interruption, just... Uh... Yeah, so uh, let's consider this staircase. Uh, I think everybody has come back, uh, breathing a little bit of fresh air. So this staircase has, when we say, see, it is uh, a slightly elevated portion over the ground. So we have, a, uh, we can define the slope as the tan of the angle. So if, it's, if you take a line over which it is raised, it makes an angle theta with the horizontal. So the tan of the angle made by the line with the horizontal, made by the inclined line with the horizontal gives the slope of the line. In other terminologies also you can define the slope. So you have, you have raised something over the horizontal which we call it as the run. So slope can also be defined as rise over run. So we can combine these two and say tan theta is equal to rise over run and if you look at this example the rise is taken as uh, 6.25 inches just a stray example and the run is 12 inches so if you want to compute what is the rise over run that gives you the slope of the staircase so the slope of the staircase uh, is uh, 6.25 over 12 and if you calculate the value you get 0 0.52 which gives you tan theta. Now when the engineer wants to construct a staircase, uh, what is the easy slope that with ease with which a person can climb the stairs, uh, the steps, the stairs can be found out if you take the inverse of this function. So theta is equal to tan inverse of 52. So experiments were made and a feasible angle to compute the angle of inclination, 
can compute the height uh, where trigonometric ratios or trigonometric functions are very handy with uh, they act as a handy tool uh, well i have just given the example when uh, egyptians also used this concept of slope in constructing their pyramids uh, so you can just see the it's uh, the pyramid the figure of the pyramid where the base is 360 and then the perpendicular height is 250 cubits they use the unit of measurement as a cubit and the one cubit was considered to be the length from a bent elbow elbow to the tip of a finger to the tip of the finger so uh, we in commonly if you call in uh, ek mal something like that in marathi if you say it is like that so it is uh, that was the unit they used to measure the distance and secret was to calculate to construct the pyramid they calculate something called as the secret and secret was run over rice uh, so here it is uh, the midpoint of the base which is 180 cubits and the height is 250 so if you take the ratio you get about 5 uh, or 5 point uh, or 5 1 over 25 palms per cubit and uh, this is if you look at the definition of this this is exactly the reciprocal of tan theta which we also know by the name now cot theta well tan theta and cot theta are uh, shortened their original or their long forms are tangent of theta and cotangent of theta yes so uh, trigonometry in uh, we we have lot of scope of trigonometry trigonometry in modern sense began with the greeks uh, hipparchus uh, in the period between 190 to 120 bc was the first to construct the values for trigonometric functions and we all used when we were in college we didn't have uh, calculators we used trigonometric tables uh, the modern symbols for trigonometric functions were introduced only after the 17th century trigonometry by and large you can consider it to be an offspring of uh, geometry well when i talked about slope i just wanted to also mention that slope and gradient uh, they are used synonymously sometimes alternatively they are used but when we say gradient it is a vector and when we say slope a slope is a scalar i want to take the example for uh, the scope of trigonometry with respect to banking of roads which is a physics problem uh well we always know that whenever we go go on highways we have this sign board of showing that a road is banked uh, that road is uh, that uh, symbol is put up because we are going along a curved road so when a vehicle goes along a curved road there is a tendency that uh, the vehicle may slip off the road due to less friction this this happens usually during uh, rainy seasons when the there is the amount of friction that is provided between the wheels and the road is not enough so then roads have to be banked at a certain angle so banking of roads is nothing but raising of the outer edge over the inner edge at a certain inclination and this is done and when you put a vehicle on the road so this we have certain parameters the weight of the vehicle which is mg this uh, weight mg acts vertically downwards and this is also balanced by the normal reaction uh, n of the ground to the vehicle uh, acting along the normal on the bank road then we have the whenever we have a vector uh, a vector can be usually resolved along two mutually perpendicular or rectangular components of the vector we can find out and we have two uh, components which are the n cos theta and n sin theta now n cos theta balances the weight of the vehicle which is n cos theta is equal to mg and 
uh, we have another uh, um, uh, component which is n sin theta now n sin theta is responsible for providing the centripetal force uh, the required to for the vehicle to go along the circular track and force when we say it's f f is equal to m into a by newton's second law and uh, we have taken m as the mass of the vehicle and acceleration is calculated to be v square upon r so we get n sin theta is equal to m v square upon r now these two equations uh, we can divide the second one by the first one and we get uh, n n gets cancelled and we have sin theta by cos theta which is nothing but the ratio tan theta m which is the common factor in the numerator and denominator also gets cancelled so we get uh, uh, v square upon r g now knowing g g is a constant so it we already know g we also know the radius of curvature of the road so it is also a fixed uh, quantity now v is fixing a safe speed limit so fixing a safe speed limit we can also find we can also assign a value to v and tan theta can be calculated so at what angle should the road be banked this equation gives us uh, the angle of banking of the road uh, which is a very handy tool and uh, it gives lot of inputs or insights for us to see how uh, tan theta works so uh, theta can be found out by tan inverse of v square by rg so so these are two uh, uh, pictures that i have taken from the google uh, which shows the banking of roads yeah one more uh, trigonometric uh, application that uh, i would like to use is uh, the uh, using the prismatic uh, compass during surveying experiments i think when you have two inaccessible points we use the prismatic uh, compass to find the distance between two inaccessible points and uh, we uh, you all of you know because most of you are civil uh, from civil branch uh, a prismatic compass uh, is a device uh, which has got uh, gradations from uh, 0 to 360 degrees and the alignment in the compass you have a north south direction so you take the uh, prismatic compass and you choose a point a and you set uh, your prismatic compass at the point a uh, then we measure lot of angles the first angle that we measure is uh, measure uh, the bearing theta 1 and uh, i learnt it uh, the learnt that theta 1 when i say it's the angle bearing theta 1 it is the angle formed by the line ap and the north direction as the reference axis measure similarly measure the bearing theta 2 i have marked theta 1 theta 2 and choose uh, b to be another point in the same line as a so you take the bearing theta 3 so we have measured these three uh, angles theta 1 theta 2 and theta 3 uh, placing the prismatic compass at a now you shift the prismatic compass to the point b uh, and do the same calculations take the bearing from b to a which is theta 4 take the bearing b to p which is theta 5 take the bearing b to q say which is theta 6 then we make we have all these angles and when we do this we get these calculations so alpha is the angle formed uh, between theta 2 when we take the difference theta 2 minus theta 1 beta is the angle formed when we have theta 3 minus theta 2 gamma is theta 5 minus theta 4 and delta is theta 6 minus theta 5 so with the knowledge of alpha beta gamma and delta if you consider the uh, triangle apb we can find the angle apb which is uh, 180 minus alpha plus beta plus gamma so you also measure the distance ab here i just like to deviate a little bit and then uh, just uh, go to uh, sine and cosine rules which are also used in architecture 
and uh, I have given these two uh, examples for uh, sine and uh, cosine rules. Well, uh, in the uh, when sine and cosine rule when we studied in uh, PUC. Sine and cosine rules were taught just taking triangle, this happens and then we, we, we were uh, using those uh, formulas. But uh, you know, there was a Persian uh, ruler called uh, Jamshid al-Kashi, a Persian uh, mathematician, sorry, who provided the law of cosines in the 15th century. So he used all this for his own, he was studying astronomy and it was uh, this while studying astronomy he found that this he developed this formula and we, the cosine rule is also alternatively you can call it as uh, Alkashi theorem or Alkashi rule and uh, he used uh, it, uh, he found these formulas suitable for triangulation and we know that survey is all about uh, using the methods of triangulation. So what is cosine rule? If you have a triangle uh, ABC, uh, we denote the side small a which is opposite to angle A, small b which is opposite to angle B and small c which is opposite to angle C. Uh, we have these three formulas that were developed because they are symmetric. You take any side, the, all the three formulas are symmetric. So a square is equal to b square plus c square minus 2bc cos a. Knowing three parameters, you can calculate whichever one you want. If you know three among them, the fourth parameter could be always calculated. So b square is equal to and c square is equal to. So we have this as the cosine rule and this as the uh, sine rule, which is sine a by a or you can take even the reciprocal a by sine a is equal to b by sine b is equal to c by sine c. When we mention uh, small a, small b, small c, they all represent sides and we, when we use capital letters uh, a, b and c, they all represent uh, angles. So I, I just come back from uh, the incompleted experiment of uh, using the prismatic compass to find uh, distance between two inaccessible points. Uh, we apply the sine rule, uh, you use the triangle APB and apply sine rule and we find that AB upon sine APB is equal to BP upon sine of alpha plus beta. So uh, we know sine, uh, knowing the parameters uh, AB, sine APB and sine alpha plus beta, we can find BP. Similarly, B, BQ is also fine, you take the triangle ABQ and you find the same sign relation, you can find BQ. Uh, I have given it, so you can go through it. We find BQ. Now you apply the cosine rule. Uh, when you apply the cosine rule, the formula becomes PQ is equal to uh, root of BP square plus BQ square minus 2BP BQ into cos of delta because we are considering the, uh, the triangle BPQ. So and we apply the cosine rule. So now we have found P and Q. P and Q are the two inaccessible points. So using the prismatic compass and with the help of sine rule and cosine rule, we were able to find out the distance PQ. So uh, this uh, was there a long time back. And I just feel that in, the, in Indian astronomy, the study of trigonometry flourished in the Gupta period. Uh, when uh, trigonometry flourished and it was uh, specially due to the great mathematician Aryabhata. The, well, we also use this uh, trigonometry in architecture while we construct arches, domes, support beams and likewise. So this was what I wanted to tell about uh, trigonometry. Now I, I just move uh, to a new uh, physical problem for civil engineering. I have tried my best to make it uh, understandable. Uh, somewhere uh, we may have some shortcomings, but uh, that can be also handled by if we go, if we make a deep study of it. Well, uh, when we talk about ODE, ODE stands for an ordinary differential equation. And we all know what a differential equation is. It's an equation that consists of uh, and uh, consists of functions and their derivatives and uh, we have uh, different types of differential equations we have linear differential equation we have a second order differential equation 
and when i say one doesn't simply walk into calculus calculus is such a fantastic uh, subject that almost all our technology tools will fail us if we don't know what is calculus uh, well i've taken the example of uh, pollution in lakes uh, a burning problem or an urgent problem in the modern society is uh, how do we reduce the pollution in our water sources well the uh, many complex uh, issues will arise uh, be, uh, and it uh, requires a multidisciplinary approach to tackle this problem uh, let uh, let us try to consider a very simplistic model for the pollution of a lake uh, well we consider the following uh, see whenever we st we start with uh, trying to find a solution for something uh, we have to make a certain assumptions we will we'll have to make few assumptions and then uh, deal with those assumptions let us uh, assume the scenario of a new pollutant suppose a pollutant is a, uh, entering a lake from an upstream and uh, this lake has a volume v uh, let us assume that the inflowing river uh, which has this pollutant let the concentration of this new pollutant be p of t i have taken the parameter uh, t because it it is with respect to time we are going to calculate it with respect to time so t is that parameter then let us assume that the river flows into the lake at the rate f of t uh see these are all assumptions so uh, we also assume that the river flows into the lake and it is well mixed it's homogeneous and it maintains a, co a constant volume is by having the river exiting the with the same flow rate of the, which is that of the inflowing river so i have mentioned that uh, the flow rate uh, yeah, inflow is at the flow rate ft so outflow is also with the same uh, rate which is ft Uh, so i have given this uh, 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 diagram where you can see that uh, there is an inflow then there is a lake which has a volume v and then it has pt which uh, uh, the pollutant pt then there is an outflow so we'll try to set up uh, a differential equation for finding the net balance of the pollution in the lake well what would be the change in amount of uh, pollutant uh, it's equal to whatever is entering uh, the and whatever is leaving so the difference between the amount entering minus amount leaving will give us the change in the amount of the pollutant well the amount of uh, the pollutant entering is pt uh, times or it's multiplied with the rate of uh, the flow of river which is ft so it is ft into pt and the yeah i have mentioned this since the lake is well assumed uh, in the concentration in the outflowing rev river will have the concentration of the pollutant in ct let it be ct and the product ft into ct gives the amount of pollutant leaving the lake per unit time well when i say change suddenly i have introduced a derivative here uh, when we say change change is nothing but we want to see how an object or how a variable changes with respect to the other so we have a fixed variable and we have a changeable variable or we call them as dependent variables and independent variables so we want to see we are fixing the time so time is a fixed variable and the amount of uh, pollutant change it is not fixed so we want to calculate so when i said that amount entering minus amount leaving so it's uh, the d by dt stands for the derivative which is uh, uh, ft pt minus ft into ct since the lake maintains a constant volume uh, we have this uh, the ct can be considered as the amount entering over the entire volume so uh, dct by uh, dt will be d of d by dt of at by v so d uh, ct of uh, dt will be the that expression we have to differentiate which is uh, this which is uh, replaced by ft pt minus ft ct and we have kept v constant which is volume is constant so uh, if you just 
simplify the equation this equation now i can rewrite the equation and we get this uh, equation as dct over dt plus ft over vct is equal to ft pt over v which is a linear differential equation so we are more used to a linear uh, differential equation in the form of dy by dx plus py is equal to q where uh, p and q are functions of x and i have compared what is uh, ct what is uh, p and what is q so that is for just for reference then we uh, the process in finding the solution of this differential equation is to find the integrating factor of this differential equation which is e raised to integral uh, ft upon v dt we can obtain uh, the solution uh, by the we have a solution which is worked out and ct is got by 1 over uh, integrating factor integral of integrating factor times ft pt uh, upon v dt plus a constant of integration c so this equation gives us the amount of concentration of the pollutant in the lake so this is a model that was uh, uh, developed uh, for finding the uh, concentration in a lake and these mathematical models are what they are just descriptions of a system that use uh, mathematic co mathematical concepts and language and uh, they are used uh, well mathematical uh, models of late have become very useful uh, in natural sciences and engineering disciplines as well as in social disciplines so this gives the concentration of the thing. okay so this was one example that i wanted to impress upon uh, when we talk of differential when we when i do a mathematics differential equation in the class i never tell this example to the students so probably there is uh, that uh, multidisciplinary approach is lost wherein students might lose interest in solving the problem the one more example that i would like to take is uh, uh, governing the shape of cables this is also a differential equation uh, why i took differential equations was because most of the engineering problems are solved with the help of differential equations uh, see when uh, one drives over a great suspension bridge he trusts his life while walking on it whether he knows or not to the differential equation that was used to predict the shape and stress in the curving cables above him he is walking but what amount of mathematics has gone when into it and uh, designing what sh what should be the shape of the cable uh, that hangs uh, while uh, you walk on that uh, bridge is an important factor yeah let us uh, consider the suspension bridge as shown uh i have tried to simplify and not gone into the details uh, well it consists of a main cable which i have shown uh and the hangers uh the parallel bars the hangers and the deck well deck has its own load as well as uh, people walking on it or the traffic on the deck is uh, the loads that are applied to the deck and these loads are transferred to the cable through the hangers so i have just uh, uh, i wanted to draw gokak bridge or lakshman jula but many international participants are there so i uh, took this figure which is the bridge uh, connecting the golden gate uh, see we can set up a coordinate system cartesian coordinate system uh, we this cartesian coordinate system is uh, owing to the french mathematician uh, rene descartes uh, by placing the origin o at the lowest point of the cable so we have a lowest point wherever it is hanging and it is the minimum uh, point of the cable that is considered as the origin and we have called it as o then the cable can be modeled as subjected to a diff so whatever load is there uniform distributed load wx and the equation governing the shape of the cable i have not gone into the derivation because uh, it requires it's a parabola then you have uh, so many things coming into picture uh, you can also refer to google and there is a uh, in wikipedia you have something called as the catenary so equations of the catenary usually determine the uh, shape of the 
cable. So d square y by uh, dx square is wx by h, where h is the tension, tension is the load in the cable at the point O. And we find that this is a second order differential equation. When we say order of the differential equation, it means that uh, uh, we are taking, uh, we, we are looking at which derivative it is. So dy by dx is first derivative d square y by dx square is the second derivative. So we call it as a second order deriv uh, differential equation and you, it has its solution and you get a, a sine, uh, the solution that you get is a sine hyperbolic function. So I have not gone into the details of de deriving the, uh, because I need to also finish off my lecture. Okay, so we, uh, let us try to, interpret the mathematics uh, solution to a real situation. Well, this is an interesting problem. Uh, we have a town in, uh, it was a, earlier a German town, but now it's in Russia. It is called as Konigsberg. And this problem itself is posed like this in mathematics. Uh, so it is a town on the Pregel River, which in the 18th century was from a German town, but now it is in Russia. Within the town, I just want to uh, see the diagram. I want you to see the diagram. Within the town are two islands. So I have shown island 1 and island 2 uh, that are connected to two banks. There are two banks with the help of seven bridges. And what people tried to do is they wanted to walk around the town in such a way that they crossed each bridge only once. But then they tried, they tried, I think they didn't succeed and it, it started becoming a difficult problem for them. Well, uh, then we have uh, uh, Leonard Euler, who was a Swiss mathematician. He heard about this problem. And in 1736, Euler proved that the walk was not possible to do. He proved this by inventing a ki kind of uh, diagram, which we now call it as a network that is made up of vertices, uh, vertices or nodes or dots where the lines meet and arcs which comprise the lines. Uh, he used four dots or four vertices for two river banks. A and B are the two river banks. C and D are the two islands. There are seven lines. Now, if you look at uh, the uh, number of arcs in this network, this it can it comprises of seven lines. And you see, if you go back to the figure, you will observe that to the river bank A, there are three bridges. To uh, the river bank B, there are three bridges. Five bridges join the island C and three join, you can just trace it out. This is an experiment, three join the island D. Uh, looking at, I may, I, you can also make another uh, remark here. You can find that every vertex have odd number of arcs. So they're all called as odd vertices. The given problem was, coming back to the uh, origin of the problem, it was to travel around the town crossing each br bridge only once. Well, on this Euler's network, what the task can be interpreted as tracing each arc only once visiting all the vertices. You have to touch upon every vertex and you have to trace the arc only once. He proved that it cannot be done. You can also check it out. Well, this remind, this uh, network reminded me of a game that we were trying to play in school when whenever we were uh, having some free time, I try to draw this uh, diagram without lifting the pencil. It was such an impossible task and you can also see that every vertex here has got, uh, uh, it has got odd number of arcs. So, thus, this theory of Euler led to the invention of networks and thus began a new theory, uh, which is called as graph theory. It is used in various branches of engineering. Uh, pertaining to civil engineering, I've just used that it is, uh, it includes planning and mapping of railways. Yeah, uh, I just made a collage of all these four pictures.
just go through the pictures here yeah this is these are all four cover pages uh, the first if you look at the first picture uh, the first picture is uh, dated 1963 Uh, it it is mostly representing a historical discipline while other three pictures 1983 2001 and 2010 all these uh, contain indirect references to history such as the pyramids uh, prime numbers pi we have dices which uh, give us uh, a, a scope or the extent of probability then we have different shapes like we have the mobius uh, strip in uh, the cover page of uh, 1983 uh, so th all this is uh, when cover pages of books are uh, designed uh, the main intention behind uh, the formation of uh, cover pages is how interesting would it would it look to the reader or to the buyer and i want to just connect this like when you teach mathematics how important it is for us to make make it more attractive for the students to make see that we have good number of buyers for our subject and how how to present a multifaceted image of mat mathematics so we have uh, some conclusion um well uh, whenever uh, a young civil graduate uh, comes out of an uh, of a college he is likely to find himself as a surveyor a land measurer which calls upon the use of plane geometry solid geometry trigonometry computing irregular volumes of excavation and regular volumes of concrete in place so to make his uh, to make him an expert in all these areas i think mathematics would act as a handy tool well uh, civil engineering is often combined with uh, envir environmental engineering as the cities and country is are now focusing more on sustainable buildings and protecting infrastructures and we had a lecture on uh, sustainable buildings or uh, sustainability by abhijit which because there are so many natural disasters that are occurring uh, these days how the infrastructure should be protected and how we should have a sustainable building is the need of the hour uh, most civil engineering programs require courses in uh, linear algebra calculus and differential equations uh, learning mathematics uh, would also enhance the expertise in with uh, a, a, with which engineering problems could be tackled uh well i also think that many of the students these days take up to research well i feel that research uh, these days should happen with a multidisciplinary approach uh, well when i was just uh, watching a movie on the imitation game uh, which focused on alan turing uh, well uh, alan turing is a famous personality in uh, computer science Uh, but he's a hardcore mathematician see he was on a mission uh, to decode the german codes during the world war 2 and he could construct a machine called the turing machine which we now uh, which is also can be termed as the computer these days so so much of mathematics went into the construction of uh, the uh, machine and he used lot of mathematics uh, in constructing that machine and if you watch that movie it gives you an inside of insight of how mathematics is all about we also owe a lot of uh, our tribute to albert einstein who without whom we could not uh, with his uh, invention of the photoelectric effect which has revolution revolutionized the way we uh, look at leds and many other things when there is a call in the country to be self reliant or atmanirbhar uh, it it is very important that research and development would be considered as of utmost importance and uh, i have these references which i took uh, uh, of course uh, books and then research papers and then i have also 
Google for pictures and other things. And I thank the audience. Uh, the uh, the uh, audience for uh, a patient listening and then uh, uh, I hope uh, I could uh, drive home some facts uh, to all of you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, see one question from Abhitendra Sarvesh. Uh, what is azimuthal angle? I think basically they are when it, it is at heights and when you have curves. I think I can send you a picture of it uh, Abhitendra, uh, Sarvesh, because uh, I, I would like to explain, I cannot explain without the picture. So, uh, yeah, uh, it is the angle uh, with respect to the poles, with, uh, with respect to the north and south poles, but I would also send you an uh, image of it if you, your email is there. And yeah, thank you Moinuddin for uh, throwing uh, light on uh, uh, Jantar Mantar from Jaipur. Yeah, that uh, sundial there in Jantar Mantar is the best example. The shadows cast on different objects in Jantar Mantar uh, gives us a lot of uh, mathematical knowledge. Uh, thank you so much. Dear participants, the live chat will be open for five minutes. You can ask your questions there. Thank you. Yeah, somebody asked the movie name. Uh, the name of the movie which uh, I would recommend all of you to see is uh, The Imitation Game. That was the question asked by Moinuddin, I think. Yes, yeah, Satish Kumar has asked uh, where they use Pythagoras uh, formula. Uh, where they use Pythagoras formula in field. Uh, well, I think, uh, uh, yeah, I also need to do a lot of homework. But uh, just to say, we set perpendiculars for marking the foundations and line outs. Yeah, I hope I have uh, answered your question. Any other questions I would uh, uh, also send, uh, if I find relevant questions, I would uh, reply back to all of you. Thank you so much. Thank you.
Thank you, Professor T. Vina, madam, for this informative session on mathematical applications in civil engineering. There were really good points to be noted, and the questionnaire link will be open for 20 minutes. The participants can enroll and start answering over there. And the link is given in the description block. Please check it out. We shall next meet on the same platform on 6th June with the topic Introduction to Modern Surveying. The link to join the sessions will be shared through email and WhatsApp a day prior to the sessions. Thank you.